Hi there and welcome to this week's video in our new series Enough and today I want to start off talking to you about lockdown purchases. There's been a lot on this in the media recently, perhaps you've caught some of it. We've spent apparently £6.6 .6 billion pounds on lockdown purchases, things to make us feel happier in a pretty miserable or frustrating situation for many of us. Things have included musical instruments and uh, exercise bikes, hot tubs, all sorts of things are on the list that people actually now regret buying. And the average purchasing price people have spent on these things is nearly one and a half thousand pounds. So they've spent all that money to get that happiness, but the happiness just hasn't lasted. Can we ever get enough happiness? It's the season where we start to think about what we're going to give and what we're going to get. And I guess it's up to you which one you think about more. But it's a really significant season. And what we'll see after Christmas into the new year are things being advertised on eBay and in local newspapers and things like that, saying unwanted gift. Somebody's bought something thinking it's gonna bring happiness, but actually it's just not worked out like that. And perhaps just like the people who've made all these purchases in the pandemic, we've bought something that we thought was gonna make a difference to our happiness and it just hasn't really worked out that way. We've ended up with an unwanted gift that just hasn't done what we expected or wanted it to do. So this week in youth, we're looking at what the Bible has to say about this idea of having enough happiness. And the Bible doesn't really use the word happy, it uses the word joy. And it says some remarkable things about joy. It says that we can experience joy in any circumstance, even if we're being persecuted. At the start of James chapter one, the writer talks about us experiencing joy, even in trials. In Luke and chapter 10, Jesus says that the disciples shouldn't just rejoice that they can see something instant, demons obeying their authority and leaving people alone. He says that actually their joy should be in the fact that their name is written in the book of life. In other words, they've got that relationship with their savior. How are we supposed to look for joy in our Christian lives? Because we're never going to get enough if we look for our joy and happiness in the wrong places. Some of the things that we'll talk about on Sunday, and hopefully we'll really be able to explore those ideas together and see how we can as believers, experience enough in terms of our joy and happiness.